He threw around her shoulders the modest wraps they had carried. Whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume. She wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by the other women who were wrapping themselves in rich furs. Loisa detained her. Wait, said he. I am going to call a cab. But she would not listen and descended the steps rapidly. Okay. So what happened as they were returning from the party? All were having uh, some elegant uh, fur in order to wrap themselves. Uh, but Madame Loisel was not having it, and she was hurrying. And Mr. Loisel is stopping her, saying that he is going to call a cab, a taxi. But she is not listening. She is uh, moving very fast. Okay, so both of them had a very good party time. When they were in the street, they found no carriage, and they began to seek for one, hailing the coachman whom they saw at a distance. They walked along towards the river, hopeless and shivering. Finally, they found one of those old carriages that one sees in Paris after nightfall. He took them as far as their door, and they went wearily up to their apartment. Okay, so they were not able to find any cab or carriage in the street, and uh, they somehow managed to find one old carriage that we see in Paris after nightfall. And somehow they are reaching their apartment, and they both of them are so tired. Okay. They are walking along the river, hopeless and shivering because it's a very cold night. Okay, windy night. It was very chilling, cold. It was, and uh, as I have already told you, uh, Madame Loisel was not having anything to cover her up, wrap up her. It was all over for her, and on his part, he remembered that he would have to be at the office by ten o'clock. She removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of herself in her glory. Suddenly, she uttered a cry. Her necklace was not around her neck. Loisel, already half undressed, asked, "What's the matter?" She turned towards him excitedly. Now the party was over for one day. Ma Matilda had felt herself as a very rich lady, wearing a very good costume and jewel and all. But when uh, she is uh, having a last look at the mirror with before removing the dress. She is having a shocking surprise over there. What happened? Her necklace was not there. It was lost. The necklace, the diamond necklace, was lost, and she is making a cry. And Loisel, he was changing his dress. He came long way running, and she inquired, "What happened? What's the matter?" So, children, as you remember, it was borrowed from Madame Forster. Okay, Madame Loisel. Borrowed the necklace from Madame Forrester. It is something that should be returned. And now, what happened? That diamond necklace was lost. I have, I have, I no longer have Madame Forrester's necklace. He arose in dismay. What? How is that? It's not possible. And they looked in the folds of the dress, in the folds of the cloak, in the pockets, everywhere. They could not find it. He asked, "You are sure you still had it when we left the minister's house?" "Yes, I felt it as we came out. But if you had lost it in the street, we should have heard it fall." Now she is shivering and saying that she has lost the necklace. Okay, and. Uh, As Mr. Loisel was shocked to hear it, and they are looking for the necklace in the folds of the dress, in the folds of the cloak, and in the pockets and everywhere. They couldn't find it, and he is asking Matilda whether it was there when they left the minister's house. Yes, Matilda is sure about it, and he is further inquiring if she had lost it in the street. Then you will hear the noise, the sound when it will fall down. Okay, it was not heard. Okay. It must be in the cab. Yes, it is possible. Did you take the number? No. And you? Did you notice what it was? No. They looked at each other, utterly cast down. Finally, Lois trusted himself again. I am going, he said, over the track where we went on foot to see if I can find it. And he went. She remained in her evening gown, not having the force to go to bed. Towards seven o'clock, her husband returned. Now they. Came at a conclusion that the necklace have been lost in the cab, and uh, they are not sure about the number. They don't remember which color cab it was. Nothing. Anyways, Mr. Loisel is was going to find, uh, and he was walking on foot 
to see whether he can find it anywhere. And uh, Matilda was not having the courage to sleep. He hasn't, uh, she hasn't uh, removed her dress as well. And uh, Mr. Loisel was back home by 7 o'clock. He had found nothing. He went to the police and to the cab officers and put an advertisement in the newspapers offering a reward. She waited all day in a state of bewilderment before this frightful disaster. Lois returned in the evening, his face pale. He had discovered nothing, he said. Write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace and that you will have it repaired. Now what happened? He was not able to find anything when he returned by 7 o'clock. He went to the police station, he went to the cab officers and he put an advertisement in the newspaper offering a reward. And all the day, Matilda was uh, in a state of confusion and she was so frightened by this disaster. At evening, Lois returned and his face was so pale because he had discovered nothing. And he said that you should write to the friend, okay? You should write to Madame Forrester that you had broke the clasp. Okay, clasp means the joint, okay? The connective joint of the necklace and uh, you need time to repair it okay so that they may get time to think what can be done the best idea will be to replace the diamond necklace isn't it okay so she is uh, writing as suggested by mr loiser that there is a small repair for the necklace and she will return it after the repairment okay so they could not afford buying a diamond necklace as we know that will give us time. She wrote as she dictated. At the end of a week, they had lost all hope. And Loisel, older by five years, declared, We must replace this jewel. In a shop of the Palais Royal, they found a chaplet of diamonds, which seemed to them exactly like the one they had lost. It was valued at 40,000 francs. So they will get some time to think about what to do. And uh, Madame Loisel, Matilda, is writing as her. Mr. Loisel dictated and at the end of that week, they lost all their hope and as Loisel was elder by five years, he said that we should replace the jewel. And in a shop at Palais Royal, uh, he had found a copy of this uh, diamond necklace looking exactly same to same. And what was the value of that necklace, children? It was 40,000 francs, okay? So, in the beginning, we know the condition of Mr. Loisel. He couldn't afford a 400 francs dress. Now, just think about it. They are planning to buy a 40,000 francs diamond necklace to be replaced. So, it's a very big problematic situation. They could get it for 36,000. Loisel possessed 18,000 francs which his father had left him. He borrowed the rest. He made ruinous promises, took money from Asuros and the whole race of lenters. Then he went to get the new necklace, depositing on the merchant's counter 36,000 francs. Okay, So even though it was 40,000 francs, he could get it by 30, 36,000 francs. Now what happened? Loisel is... Uh, taking the bank balance that his father had given him. It was 18,000. The rest he is borrowing from his friends, relatives and even from money lenders. Okay, such a huge debt Mr. Loisel was moving into. And he went to get the new necklace and he got it for 36,000 francs. Now a big question comes. He is just a petty clerk. Okay, a petty economical clerk. How? Mr. Loisel is going to repay all these debts. Okay, children. So, he made a lot of ruinous promises and the money that was borrowed from the money lenders will charge a huge interest, children. When Madame Loisel took back the jewels to Madame Forrester, the latter said to her in a frigid tone, You should have returned to me, then, to me sooner, for I might have needed them. Madame Forrester did not open the jewel box as Madame Loisel feared she would. What would she think if she should perceive the substitution? What should she say? Would she take her for a robber? Now, Madame Loisel is taking back the new diamond necklace to Madame Forrester. And Madame Forrester was very displeased as uh, Matilda had made such a delay in returning back the diamond necklace. Okay, And uh, 
Matilda was very much concerned about Madame Forrester opening the box, whether she may find out that it's a duplicate, it's a substitution, and all those things, and uh, whether Matilda will be taken for a robber and all. All these fears were grabbing Matilda when she went back to Madame Forrester. But fortunately, Madame Forrester is not opening the box and she is not looking at the necklace, and Matilda was so safe. Madame Loisa now knew the horrible life of necessity. She did her part, however, completely heroically. It was necessary to pay this frightful debt. She would pay it. They sent away the maid. They changed their lodgings. They rented some rooms in an attic. She learned the odious work of a kitchen. She washed the dishes. She washed the soiled linen, their clothes and dish clothes, which she hung on the line to dry. Now, a very horrible life of necessity was waiting for Madame Eloisa. She did her part completely and heroically, because it was necessary to pay their frightful debt. And what happened? First of all, they are sending away the maid, and they are shifting to a lodging where the expense will be less. They rented some room. Okay, they are going on a rent, and they rented some room, and. Uh, they are. Uh, she is doing the odious work, all the works of a kitchen. She is washing the dishes. She is washing the soiled clothes and the dish clothes. Everything. Okay. So far, they used to have the maid, the servant, to do all these things. And now, really, Madame Loisel was having a very miserable life. Okay. So far, she was not at all having any appreciation about the life that she was living. Now, she is having a very Horrible, terrible life. Okay, so the point here is that children, if you are not appreciating water things you are having now, then it can be taken away from you. Then you will realize the real value of the things. She took down the refuse to the street each morning and brought up the water, stopping at each landing to catch her breath. And clothed like a woman of the people, she went to the grocers, the butchers, and the fruiters with her basket on her arm, shopping, haggling to the last sou of her miserable money. The husband worked evenings, putting the books of some merchants in order, and nights he often did copying at five sous a page. Now, what happened? Uh, she went to take the water, and she. Clothed like a woman, an ordinary woman, and she went to buy the grocery, the butcher shop, the fruiter, and she used to bargain the money. And her husband's condition was also so worse. After his work, he used to work at evening and night time also. He used to put the books of some merchants in order. As a salesman, he worked, and at night he did the work of copying of a, a page. At a very mere amount, okay, at very five thousand all. So both the husband and wife was having a really bad time because they had to pay back such a huge debt. Okay, children, this a debt, and all no, you have no idea. If you borrow some money from anyone, you will not have any relief, any relaxation till you pay it out. And this life lasted for ten years. At the end of ten years, they had restored all. Madame Loisel seemed old now. She had become a strong, hard woman, the crude woman of the poor household. Her hair badly dressed, her skirts awry, her hands red. She spoke in a loud tone and washed the floors with large pails of water. And they are having this life of trials and tribulations for ten years. Now, at the end of ten years. They were able to pay back all the debts, all the money that they had borrowed. Now, Matilda had become a very strong, hard woman, the crude woman of the power household. Okay, and her hair was badly dressed. She was uh, no more appreciating her beauty. She was no more bothered about her beauty and her well-being and all. She was not at all bothered about how she looked and all. Her skirts were so dirty. Her hands were so reddish of these laborious works, and she always spoke in a loud tone. She was not at all soft and smooth, and she washed the floors with large pails of water. A typical ordinary household woman. Okay, that was the condition of Matilda. Okay, see all this <coughs> poverty. Actually, what is poverty? Matilda is understanding now. 
okay children so far she was not able to appreciate whatever she had now she understood she always uh, used to cry about poverty but sometimes when her husband was at the office she would sit herself before the window and think of that evening party of former times of that ball where she was so beautiful and so flattered how would it have been if she had not lost the necklace who knows how singular is life and how full of changes okay now when her husband was at the office she would sit herself all alone in a window and she could think of that evening party that changed her entire life okay she would rather think about how beautiful and how others were flattering her on that evening party and she would also think about how life would have been if she hadn't lost the necklace how small a thing will ruin or save one one sunday as she was taking a walk in the champs and to rid herself of the cares of the week she suddenly perceived a woman walking with a child it was madame forestier still young still pretty still attractive madame loisel was affected should she speak to her yes certainly now this shows that a small thing can ruin your life or save your life underline that sentence children how small a thing will ruin or save one now one sunday what happened when she was on a walk to be free of the all the cares of the week she is coming across a woman who was walking with a child and it was madame forestier and madame forestier was still young still pretty and still attractive now madame loisel felt very much affected and she thought of whether she should speak to her or not and she decided to speak to her okay children now you all will like to go for a walk in order to keep yourself off from all the stress and strain now as she was on a walk on the champs elysis she is coming across madame forestier okay and uh, matilda is thinking of going and talking to her and now that she had paid she would tell her all why not she approached her good morning jean her friend did not recognize her and was astonished to be so familiarly addressed by this common personage she stammered but madame i do not know you you must be mistaken no i am matilda loisel her friend uttered a cry of astonishment oh my poor matilda how you have changed now as uh, matilda has paid all the debts Uh, she thought of going to madame forestier and tell her all that had happened now she is wishing her good morning jean and madame forestier was surprised to see somebody addressing her in a very familiar common personage but she was not able to identify matilda and she said she may be mistaken now matilda says that i am mrs loisel i am mrs matilda loisel now madame forestier was crying in astonishment yes i have had some hard days since i saw you and some miserable ones and all because of you because of me how is that you recall the diamond necklace that you loaned me to wear to the minister's ball yes very well well i lost it how is that since you returned it to me i returned another to you exactly like it and it has taken us 10 years to pay for it you can understand that it was not easy for us to have anything yes so madame forestier is saying that matilda has changed a lot and matilda said that yes some hard days i had after meeting you because all because of you now madame forestier was quite confused and uh, matilda revealed her that the diamond necklace that was loaned to her to wear to the minister's ball was lost by her and uh, madame forestier said that no you have returned it to me yes i returned it but it was just a copy exact copy of it and it took for us 10 years to pay all the debt and uh, madame loisel is also adding up that you know as well it is not for easy for us who have nothing okay as matilda was not rich it was a huge debt to buy such a diamond necklace in order to replace the other one she had lost okay so right now but it is finished and i am decently content madame forestier stopped short she said you say that you bought a diamond necklace to replace mine yes you did not perceive it then they were just alike and she smiled with proud and simple joy madame forestier was touched 
and took both her hands as she replied, "O oh, my poor Netilda, mine were false; they were not worth over five hundred francs." Now, Madame Loisa, Netilda was happy that uh, she is content and happy that she was able to return it. So, Madame Forester is repeatedly asking her. So, you are saying that you bought a real one? Yes, and she is. told her that it was a duplicate it was not an original diamond necklace it was a duplicate necklace of worth not more than 500 francs okay so madame loisel who was smiling with proud and simple joy became speechless on this note that the diamond necklace that she wore on that day was a fake one it was a duplicate one and she lost 10 years of her life spending on buying a real diamond necklace okay children it's having a very good moral lesson so children be happy with what you have okay so we will meet in the live session read the chapter okay thank you have a nice day the necklace a long time ago one of the most pretty and charming girls was born her grace and beauty was so great that she was meant to live a luxurious life wearing beautiful clothes expensive jewelry and residing in a big mansion she could have easily been taken as a lady of great wealth but it seemed that fate played a trick on her and she was born into a poor family they had no dowry for her she finally married a little clerk loisel in the ministry of education madame loisel as she came to be called was very unhappy with her life she believed that though she was born beautiful and clever fate by not making her born in a rich household and married into a richer one had played a cruel joke She imagined vast salons decorated with antique silks, exquisite pieces of furniture supporting priceless ornaments, where she could give big parties. She wished to live a life that would complement her beauty. And when she and her husband sat down for dinner, while her husband exclaimed delightedly, "Aha! Broth! What could be better?" She imagined delicate meals served on silver plates. Madame Loisel had no fine clothes, no jewels, nothing, and these were the only things she loved. She had a rich friend, an old school friend, whom she refused to visit because she felt sorry for herself after meeting her own friend. One evening. Her husband came home with an exultant air, holding a large envelope in his hand. "Here's something for you," he said. Swiftly, she tore the paper and drew out a printed card on which were these words: "The Minister of Education and Madame Ramponneau request the pleasure of the company of Monsieur and Madame Loisel at the Ministry on the evening of Monday." January the eighteenth. Instead of being delighted, as her husband hoped, she flung the invitation across the table, murmuring, "What do you want me to do with this?" Why, darling, I thought you'd be pleased. You never go out, and this is a great occasion. I had tremendous trouble to get it. Everybody wants one. It's very select, and very few go to the clerks. You'll see all the really big people there. She looked at him out of furious eyes and said, "And what do you suppose I am to wear at such an affair?" He stammered, "Why, the the dress you go to the theatre in? It it looks very nice to me." Madame Loisel started to cry. "What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you?" He asked hesitantly. She replied, "Nothing. Only I can't go to this party as I don't have anything to wear." The husband was heartbroken. 
Look here, Matilde. He persisted. How much would a nice but simple dress cost? She thought for several seconds, thinking how much money she could make her husband give her without him refusing. At last, she replied, "I don't know exactly, but I think I could do it with four hundred francs." He grew slightly pale, for this was exactly the amount he had been saving for a gun. Nevertheless, he said, "Very well, I'll give you four hundred francs." The day of the party drew near, and Madame Loisel seemed anxious. One evening, her husband said to her, "What's the matter with you? You've been behaving very oddly." "I'm utterly miserable because I don't have any jewelry to wear with it." "How stupid you are!" exclaimed her husband. "Go and see Madame Forestier, your friend, and ask her to lend you some jewels. You know her quite well enough for that." She exclaimed, "That's true." I never thought of it. Next day, she went to see her friend and told her trouble. Madame Forestier took Madame Loisel to her dressing room and said, "Choose, my dear." Madame Loisel finally chose a superb diamond necklace, which she wore with her gown. She was the center of attraction at the party. Everyone noticed her. All the men wanted to dance with her. All the ladies praised her. She received many compliments. Madame Loisel felt truly happy and thankful for the first time in her life. When they reached home, she discovered that the borrowed diamond necklace was missing. They looked everywhere but could not find it. Scared of going to the prison. They sold everything they had and borrowed money to raise thirty-six thousand francs to buy a replacement. The husband worked two jobs. They shifted to a smaller house, and Madame Loisel, who had dreams of a luxurious life, had to do her own work. She came to know what abject poverty meant. In ten years. They were able to pay back all the money they had borrowed. By then, she lost all her beauty and looked older. What would have happened if she had never lost those jewels? Who knows? Who knows? How strange life is! How fickle! How little is needed to ruin or to save. One day, she saw her old friend Madame Forestier. Walking with her daughter, she was still beautiful and graceful. Madame Loisel decided to go and meet her friend, and tell her about what happened. Good morning, Jean. The other did not recognize her. I am Mathilde Loisel. Oh, my poor Mathilde! How you have changed! Yes. I've had some hard times since I saw you last, and many sorrows, and all on your account. On my account? How was that? You remember the diamond necklace you lent me for the ball at the ministry? Yes. Well. Well, I lost it. How could you? Why you brought it back? I brought you another one just like it. And for the last ten years, we have been paying for it. You realize it wasn't easy for us. We had no money. Well, it's paid for at last. Madame Forestier had halted. You say you bought a diamond necklace to replace mine. And she smiled in proud and innocent happiness. Madame Forestier, deeply moved. Took her two hands. Oh, my poor Mathilde! But mine was an imitation. It was worth at the very most five hundred francs. <laughs>